sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, my name is Janet Austin, and I want to start this presentation um, with a picture of my two wonderful sons. <laughs> and the reason for this is I, they are at the point in their life where they're going off into the world, and I've been giving them a little bit of advice on how to become an adult and find your path. And the two main points of advice that I'm giving to them are things that really worked for me. So um, one of those was to take some kind of a course that's not part of your major, something that's maybe you're interested in, but it's not like required. And for me, that came through languages are, are beautiful and needed. Um, so this piece is uh, about the prairie plants. There's a echinacea, uh, wild indigo, uh, prairie dock, and also the milkweed with the monarch butterfly. This piece was purchased by the Deerfield Public Library. Um, often I will take sort of unwanted or unliked pictures and turn them into something fun and beautiful. So the American toad, I wanted to make it be a happy thing that little girls would enjoy. Um, I brought him here today. He has flowers and peace signs and blues and greens and the things that I liked when I was that age. So. Also the grapple, this one is uh, up in Lake Forest, a uh, sculpture uh, park, and the grapple is another bird that's not very well liked. He's got a really nasty cry. He goes in and takes the eggs from more sweeter sounding songbirds' nests. Here's my wasp. This is a lacewing, and um, or there's two of them. They eat aphids in the garden. Um, down below here, there's a couple of medcats. One of them is going to house the lace wings. Um, milkweed beetle. This, with this one, I'm getting into more invasive species. And this piece, the gypsy moth, is at the Skokie North Shore Sculpture Park in Evanston along the Cormac Trail. Maybe you've driven by there. There's a number of big pieces out there. Um, I bring attention to the fact that the moth is not very well liked, probably, um, and then called it, titled it the night butterfly to make it be more like a butterfly. The night butterfly is just a beautiful name for moths. It's the word in several languages, including Finnish and French, papillon de nuit. So I'm trying to make something that's not very well liked, something that people want to look at. And it's got a really beautiful iridescent um, tile on the back that shines when you drive by. Again, another invasive pest, um, Mr. Emerald Ashbor. This piece is uh, part of something that went in at the Lincoln Park Zoo last year, and it was called Mr. Big Beetle Finds His Way. The show was Nature in Motion, and I chose the Emerald Ashbor. Um, he came into this country on pallets into the Midwest and escaped um, and started eating ash trees here in Chicago. You guys know there's been hundreds of thousands of trees lost in the Chicago Park District. Um, but he's doing just what he does. I mean, he's somebody who's trying to keep his family alive and, and procreate. We had a number of ash trees all planted at one time, um, probably a period, you know, around the, around the 1900s. So there's a lot of, of trees coverage um, not a lot of biodiversity, and he's, he's been attacking them. On the right, you can see how he does it, which is with this larva that go in between the bark and the heart of the tree. And that's where the capillaries pull all the water up to the leaves. So by making these trails and eating his way along that area, he's actually starving the tree of water. Um, the piece on the left, it's kind of hard to see, but that's a maze. So I took the two of these together and made a maze on the top of the ash leaf. And then I had this uh, cut into stainless steel and perched my emerald ash border on top of the leaf. In order to do work of this size, it <laughs> takes a certain amount of strength and fortitude and knowledge. And one of the things I learned this year was to drive a bobcat. <laughs> I have help operate a crane. Here we are testing that, uh, that oak leaf that the moth was resting on. Um, it's out in the public. People have to be able to climb on it. This is my fabricator, Wesley. I worked on it at his shop in Pilsen, uh, just to make sure that it's going to be strong enough. And this piece was interesting. I didn't start it with any uh, computer-aided design at all. We kind of did this from a maquette and just playing around with the big size piece out there. It was really fun to make. 
Um, but after that, I've gotten into using computer-aided design a little bit more to help me manufacture my large pieces. And you can see that with this piece that I brought in today. Um, this comes, this is a water bird, and here it's a four foot tall piece, but I have been accepted to the Chicago Sculpture Exhibit this summer, and I'm having it uh, blown up into nine feet tall. Well, I'm having it, okay. I sent the files to the plasma cutter. I got them back, they're now at a, fa at a fabricator's. I'm gonna go help them weld and put it together. I've got somebody to work with um, to make this piece, but the thing that I really want to point out about this is how I'm trying to keep the look and the mark of the artist. I'm not taking something that's prefabricated bird and, you know, turning it into a three-dimensional piece by using a computer to make it bigger. I actually started with, um, a little clay piece that I sculpted. And then I had this turned into a, a 3D scan, into a mesh program. From there, I went into a program that allows me to put the slices in. Um, and the interesting thing about that program is I had a lot of control over what each one of the slices looked like, how far apart they could be, um, if they're straight. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a twist to this guy. He's not, it's not perfect. Everything isn't stacked at the same dimensions. The drawn line is, is my line. It's not something that I just made from an oval. Um, especially if you look at the base of this um, little last one, maybe you can come up while we're changing out. Uh, he's, he's a little crickety. He's not like straight on. So I think this is a really good way to allow the mark of the artist to come through in the work. And that's what I like about having the knowledge to be able to use the CNC and the CAD programming, which means computer-aided design, but yet knowing enough about it that I can do my own drawing and I can add in those little idiosyncrasies that really make something personal. Uh, this is my last slide, which is um, a proposal for a fountain in downtown Evanston, and I've taken a number of water creatures and stacked them in a pyramid, starting with, a, actually the bottom is a granite block, and then the Blanding's turtle, which is an endangered uh, Illinois um, reptile, uh, the blue heron, and the dragonfly. Um, down below here, and when we're changing up, you can come and look, there's a number of little maquettes that I produced of these pieces that I've been talking about today. And as a sculptor, a lot of times you have to supply a maquette when you uh, do a uh, proposal. Um, so they're asking for something that's often one inch equals one foot, and that's what these pieces are. 